full disclosure, I ended up watching the documentary last night uh, on the record industry, primarily because Russell Simmons' daughter and then Kimora, uh Aoki went on. She was crying. I was, you know, it ended up on my timeline on Twitter. I was like, what's happening here? And then Kimora came on and I was like, oh, shoot, something's going down. And then it made me go watch this documentary, which I hadn't watched. It kind of got lost during the pandemic. There was a lot happening. And I I, I should have watched it because one of my authors is in it. Um, Salai Abrams, who was actually on the show when I first started. Um, we, you know, I published her book and I um I was horrified and at the same time completely not surprised. And I'm wondering when there's going to be a surviving Puffy uh, and a host of other things. Now, full disclosure, I actually am friends with L.A. Reid's former wife. Uh, Y'all know her as Pebbles. And so I know a lot of stuff. So when that part came, I was like, "Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, I know about that. Um, And Russell was interesting uh, because he had reached out to do a project with him. And one of the first uh, weeks that I was at the New York Daily News in the business department, I did a story on him and he sent me the most amazing flower arrangement I had ever seen before. And it was a black florist, uh, Daily Blossoms. I'll never forget it because I was like, everybody in the newsroom was like, what the hell? And I was like, I don't know. And it was from Russell Simmons. So there's like this weird thing that we have in our community with people. And I'm I'm saying this as somebody that, you know, you you grow up or you grow in an industry. And of course, y'all know I did an LL Cool J book. I make my own rules and Russell's, you know, Def Jam. There's, there's a lot of convergence. And for many years, I was, you know, the go-to definitely at the Daily News in terms of hip hop. Um, writing the first piece on Biggie and doing a lot of bad boy stuff. At the same time, I've seen colleagues of mine uh, want to be part of, like we were talking with Gina Yashere, part of the culture, not a journalist, you know, and there's a, a blurry line there. But what that has also given them is access and, and insight into things that I might not be privy to because I wasn't at the parties. I, I didn't I didn't I didn't uh, spend my time with the people. I was a you know journalist on the outside looking in, getting sources. So it was is interesting to watch these people whose lives, their careers parallel run parallel to mine and to see now the accountability which must happen. And it happened because his daughter basically was like, this is who you are. And the emotions behind it. And then his ex-wife who we now, now we're putting two or two together. Like, so it's L R Kelly and Aaliyah, you know, it's Russell and a 16 year old from high school as a grown man, you know, and you think about our community being silent, myself included. So I'm like, I'm indicting myself. Cause I'm like, I should have had to lie on. Oh, we should have been talking about it. I, I promise you, though, it was just like, eh, do you know, is this in my purview? And then I totally forgot that this documentary on the record was out. So I, I'm going to talk actually more about this tomorrow. But what I walked away with is that we leave a lot of space for horrible things that happen. And we don't say anything. And so by not saying anything or worse, providing coverage. I can tell you the saddest time on these airwaves is when we we talked about R. Kelly and had people call up women and men defending him. It was really sad um, when we got to talk to the supermodel, Beverly Johnson, and she told her story. um, And then to have so many people defend Cosby, including Felicia Rashad. It's really horrific to sit here and know after watching this and because it's part of it is well you know these women know what they're getting into and so there's like this kind of understanding but the great thing with this documentary it goes into history it takes it all the way back to enslavement uh there's one one woman who was violated by russell simmons raped by him uh in this documentary who talks about going back to africa to the castle that I've talked about on this show. 
um, and and understanding that 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 town that that in the middle of the castle with a chain that's still there is where women were chained and raped in front of everyone in front of their men and the men were then put in this like hot box to suffocate to death those who would have the audacity to fight for 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 the women and you think about that over centuries of the tipping into or the just I don't know if he was even tipping into the the quarters to snatch and do unthinkable things to the women, the children and the men. And there's no recourse. And what that does to a person over generations epigenetically. And then I I sit today uh, and I think about where we are as a culture and what we've allowed. And then you look at the, the music industry when these women had to leave. And what it turned into bitches ain't ish, but hoes and tricks and all of this. I slap, a ho- you know, all of the lyrics that we dance to, because that drum is the penetrator of your soul. That drum, that beat is what gets into your soul carried with the words, which is why music is so powerful. They say music soothes the savage beast, but music, uh, if you think about the light bearer, <laughs> who was the musician in heaven, you think about the power of music and what it does to a person. How, when I put on songs in the key of life from the beginning, and I want to thank uh, Izzy for getting me a, a vinyl, because now I got to buy a record player and I'm going to, because there's something spiritual about the art of music and beats and drums and guitars with words that carry kids can memorize and remember Everything. I mean, we learn our ABCs over song, right? That's how we learn our ABCs over song. So I just think about the impact of not having women in positions of power in hip hop and rap at its infancy. And it much like the AI that we talk about being generated by soulless predators for whom they've made the culture of being a predator acceptable. I uh, got to interview Mother Fletcher last week, 109-year-old survivor of the Tulsa massacre. And her publisher and I were talking afterwards, and she said one of the books that I, I, I pinned, uh, helped, to, helped to pin uh, Confessions of a Video Vixen. She was in Canada at the time. She said everybody wanted to be a video. Uh, they, you know, we call them video hoes, right? Everyone wanted to be a video hoe. And then she read that book. And the only reason why I decided to do that because it was a cautionary tale. I wanted people to see that woman on the floor in the bathroom strung out. Like I wanted you to see the, the carnage of her soul. I wanted you to not want to become a video vixen. And she said, you did your job because after reading that book, I had no desire to do that. And I, I think about um, Nicki Minaj and I was listening to some lyrics She's got new music out. And I just think about like to to say these things out of your mouth about other women. And I'm not singling out Nicki Minaj as much as I am the entire industry that and I'm not being C. Dolores Tucker. I'm saying that our children deserve more from us. And I'm saying that. Our men, our boys that will become men, our girls that will become women deserve to have an environment and art and music and and culture that uplifts and and puts them in a position to uh, have agency and to love one another because we can. That's 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 who we are. And to allow. To allow always always use this analogy, you know, their guns pointed at us. Why are we giving them the bullets? If they're already guns pointed at us, why are we giving them the bullets? So uh, watching on the record, I want to uh, kudos to the director, Kirby Dick, and Amy Zarek, uh, who uh, produced and direct directed it. Uh, it's just so well done. But more importantly, it's sickening at the same time to just think about all of what could have been if we had enough gumption and I think about being one of those 20 something year olds saying Calvin Butts rest in power and see Dolores Tucker, we're doing too much. Hey, out there steamrolling CDs and, you know, painting over billboards and, you know, really coming hard, but they were right. They were right. They were absolutely right. And if you tell me that 
you can listen to this music and it doesn't affect how you treat other people. I'm going to tell you you're delusional. So there's that. We have to be zero tolerant at this point. This is we're in crisis. You know, it's like you you've been diagnosed with something. Uh, you know, you have diabetes. Well, a little bit of cake is not going to harm me. But you don't know when that last little piece is going to be the one that's going to have your leg amputated. You don't know. So so why play? Why even play? Why not reverse it? Because you can, by the way, type two. So why why not? Why not double down and be pristine with your diet and make sure that you eradicate the the disease? Oh, a little a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of R. Kelly is not bad. No, uh, the music is good. Yes, the music is good. And may, maybe there's space when we heal to to be able to listen to the music. But as long as there is a, a predator in your home, in your family, at the family reunion, at the cookout, at the at the Thanksgiving table, as long as you got a predator in your family that you don't address, then we have to be zero tolerant. We have to be zero tolerant. So it's not just about me too. Uh, but it's also like the audacity of these guys to even deny when you know there's a string of women out there, <laughs> not just one. One we could write off, right? But you know that there's 10, 20, 30. In the c- case of Cosby, damn near 970. I think it's more than 70. You know, at some point, like, all of them are lying. There's a vast right wing conspiracy because he wanted to buy NBC. Like we will construct the most ridiculous stories instead of dealing with what we all already knew. Cause I'm going to tell you as a, as a young reporter, I heard the stories. And as somebody that has been in, in the media for a long time, I know the stories. So um, just wanted to bring that up. I don't know if anybody else watched 